This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 2010 Toyota Tacoma SR5. Up front is a 2.7 liter inline four and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Tacoma because this is the base of the base. This is an honest true to form work truck or basic truck. This is meant to do a purpose. It's not meant to comfort you. It's not meant to hold your hand. And I really like driving basic trucks like this. It's been a little while since I've done so. And the other reason I'm excited to drive this is because it has a major flaw that I am quite excited to talk about. Before we get on with the rest of the video, I have a website, zachpradle.com, where you can buy merch, such as this retro sticker pack, so you can rep shooting cars wherever you go. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through the submission form on zachpradle.com. And you can also read my blog, figure out what I'm reviewing that week, and get some behind the scenes content. But let's get back to that 2.7 liter inline four, making 158 horsepower and 182 foot pounds of torque. This engine is a boat anchor. It's a dog. It's a paperweight. It's very, very slow. It's not very powerful. And it doesn't seem super happy to be doing almost anything you ask it to do. However, it is a stout little engine. Think of it like an old Irish lady. They don't seem happy to be where they are, but they've been kicking butt and taking names for longer than almost anyone else on this planet. So the 2.7 is just a little stubborn Irish lady. The reason I know it's so stubborn and stout is because they put this into a lot of vehicles. Not necessarily here in the US, however, you could have gotten a forerunner for a very short amount of time with this engine. Overseas, they put it in the Hilux, the Surf, the High Ace, the Innova, and the Coaster, of which those vehicles aren't even sold in the US anymore, but they're sold globally. And globally, vehicles don't get treated quite as nice as they do in America. We are lucky enough to have mostly paved roads. A lot of countries where those other vehicles are sold don't have that luxury, so they have to be tough. Like I said, paired to a five-speed manual transmission, the shifter throw actually feels nice and notchy. The bushings after 141,000 miles have actually held up really well, and I enjoy the shifting experience. It does take a little bit of agitation of that 2.7 liter to get it in the gear, and the clutch has pretty far travel, but again, this isn't a sports car. It has a manual transmission to do the work, to be reliable and dependable. It's easier to fix a manual transmission than it is an automatic. So there's definitely a reason for it. Last but not least, this truck is four wheel drive and we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. On the left is my tachometer, in the center is my speedometer, and on the right, I have my coolant temperature and fuel. Nothing really crazy to write home about. Very clean and easy to read, which I appreciate. On the steering wheel, I don't get anything but the Toyota badge and the airbag. We do get a horn. <laughs> Moving off to the left, I have my traction control and my RSCA off. But then I have this center switch that says clutch start cancel. I've never seen this in a vehicle. So I'm gonna pull over here and turn it off and see if when I hit this switch, I don't need the clutch to start it. Yep, so when that's engaged, you can start it without the clutch. Now, of course, that is a safety feature. I've never seen a car give you the opportunity to bypass that, but the Toyota does. That actually would come in handy if your master cylinder or slave cylinder fails on your clutch. Then you could start the car in gear, at least get it going. I guess that would be handy. It's here in the Tacoma and it looks factory. If someone can prove me wrong, please do so in the comments. Then I get a bunch of dead switches. This, of course, is a base truck. It's gonna be dead switches. Moving out of the door, I do have a little speaker on the door. My latch should get in and out, and my window crank. It's been a little bit since I've driven a car with crank windows, but we're in the basic Tacoma, so of course. Moving into the center, I do have a CD player, AM, FM radio. I can, of course, seek track and 
Very, very standard 2000s Toyota stuff here. And then I get a little hazard switch and a digital clock. And off to the left, this is my four wheel drive setting. So I have two high, four high and four low, which is very, very nice. That is one of the options here on the Tacoma. You could still find two wheel drive Tacomas in this era, but this is the four wheel. Then I have my climate controls, very basic, very big, very notable. There's no really missing those. I have fan speed, temperature, and where to send it. And then down below, I do have a 12 volt outlet and an aux in, which is very, very nice. So I can aux in to this basic little truck. I get a cubby down below, and then we have the shifter area. Let's talk about the shifter first. The shifter, obviously manual shifter. Like I said, the bushings feel good. It is very tall and honestly to be expected out of a vehicle like this. You don't really put a short throw in your work truck. And I actually sort of like this taller throw. It makes me feel like I'm actually doing the work. I'm putting in the hours. Where short throws, I just kind of flick my wrist and go home. But off to the right, we do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And unfortunately, the Tacoma does fail. However, you might be looking at that and say, oh, those cup holders look like they're removable. They are, but once you remove them, the area in which they previously sat is now too big and the bottle falls over. So there doesn't seem to be a Goldilocks holder here in the Tacoma, but that's okay. Now we gotta talk about the seats and the seats are kind of interesting. They are plush, they're finished in graphite gray as the rest of this interior, but it is a bench seat. This is a single cab also helping out that sort of work truck vibe. And this is a bench seat. However, it is adjustable, but it all moves as one. So if you need to be closer to the pedals like me, I kind of have shorter legs and a taller torso. I gotta be a little bit closer to the pedals. Well, my passenger is gonna be closer to the dashboard as well. But one issue that might come with this is if you have younger kids, you want them further away from the airbag as possible. We don't have back seats, so let's hop around back and we'll talk about the bed and the cargo space. All right, so around the back of the Tacoma, now this is the short bed, short cab, or single cab and nothing really to write home about. I do have obviously a regular tailgate. I do have a little compartment back here. Some nice storage in there and I have another one on the other side. Again, this is just a plastic cover. Just pop that up. Nothing really too crazy. And I do have tie downs, which is a very nice feature, but this is just a basic bed. I don't really need anything more than this. You can put whatever you want back here. And if you have to strap something down, you have the ability to. And if you have to move something crazy, I mean, you can use your own ingenuity for that. Very simple work truck around the back. Now we got to talk about the looks and this is finished in black sand pearl, uh, which is just black. It's just black paint. Um, very, very basic. However, I guess it is a step up from being white with unpainted bumpers. I overall like the look of the Tacoma. I think it looks ready. I think it looks like a little pickup truck. I think it's very well proportioned, especially in this single cab short bed setup. And overall, I, I, I really like it. You know, this looks like a truck that would last a very long time. And it just so happens that, well, it actually fits that bill. Except it almost didn't. Let's get to my final thoughts and we'll talk about the frame. 2005 to 2010 Toyota Tacomas suffered from frame rot. No one's really sure why this happened to this particular set of trucks. The theory is the fact that Toyota outsourced the building of the frames to a third party company. And in order to keep up with demand, they kind of sped up the process and didn't coat the frames as well as they could have to prevent rust. But no matter the reason, in the late 2010s, these trucks were recalled for their frame rot. Owners were finding severe structural issues with the frames. And also, it should be noted that this wasn't only the Tacomas. It was the 07 to 08 Tundra. So it wasn't just the Tacoma, but the Tacoma took the brunt of this controversy. And so what ended up happening is in 2016, Toyota settled for a whopping 3.4 billion dollars to start a program to replace the frames of these rotted out Tacomas. It was a structural defect. It wasn't safe. And as said, 1.5 million vehicles were affected by this with an estimated 225,000 actually needing a new frame. Each new frame replacement cost Toyota $15,000 out of their own pocket between parts and labor. 
And luckily for the owners of said Tacomas, they got them for free. It wasn't any cost to you. You just had to give up your truck for a week, a month, a couple months. I mean, a frame replacement is like replacing your skeleton. How would you go about doing that? Everything needs to get swapped over. It's not a one day process. And as this lawsuit cleared, it immediately made 1.5 million trucks eligible to come in for some free service. If it didn't need a new frame, then Toyota would go through the process of properly rust proofing them, spraying on a coating to prevent corrosion. And the actual problem was the fact that frames would rust out. They're steel frames that didn't have any protection. And so if you lived in California, you were probably okay. Arizona, sure. You don't see salt, you don't see rain all that much. Those trucks were probably better. But up here in the north, the salt belt, just take a long gander at this video I took the other day. You southerners might upchuck your lunch. We drive over corrosive material for half the year. And so what would happen is the frames would start to rust and the leaf spring mounts would end up failing. That's a big failure on these Tacomas. And so the bed would either slant a little bit, the truck wouldn't drive straight and problems ensued from there. So with all of that being said, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Toyota actually righted their wrong. They fixed all eligible Tacomas that were brought into service centers. Now you might find a Tacoma that's been left in a barn since 2005 that might have frame rot issues still because they didn't take it in to get fixed. But for the most part, most Tacomas like this one have had their frame replaced or at the very least, it's been protected. And so you can buy a Tacoma from this era, 2005 to 2010, without too much worry. However, if you are planning on doing so, I'd highly recommend asking the owner if it's been replaced or what kind of service it received to remedy the frame corrosion issue. And that's a shame because these trucks are stout little fighters. Driving it, I'm not having a very pleasurable driving experience. Like I said, shifting, although it does feel good, it's a little bit of work. The truck is very stubby, doesn't have good ride quality, but that's not what I look for in a truck, an actual piece of equipment. It's like complaining that your sledgehammer doesn't have Bluetooth connectivity. You're looking for it in the wrong areas. This is just an honest to God, down to earth truck, a true truck truck. Yes, I love reviewing the big GMCs with the Apple CarPlay and massage seats and more leg room than I can fathom and center consoles that could fit rotisserie chickens, an official unit of measurement for shooting cars reviews. But if you just want something to work, be honest about what it is, start up every morning and be a hardened little trooper, here's the Tacoma. It's ready for you and it's ready for whatever you plan on throwing at it, which I imagine will be quite a bit. Sure, this truck had a big flaw, but it's fixed and it'll continue to live on for days, months, and many years. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out this here Tacoma. I'm so glad I was finally able to get behind the wheel of one of these. They are absolutely awesome. They have tons of Tacomas on the lot if you're looking for a new truck. They have a couple from this era as well as, of course, they have brand new ones and anything in between. If you want a Forerunner, Sequoia, Highlander, Land Cruiser, the new GR86, whatever it might be, they have you covered and they're absolutely awesome. We've been working together for over three years and I can't thank them enough, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe. If you really liked it. Take care guys. <laughs>